Today's sponsor is Aura. More about them at the end of today's video. All right, well, leaders at the COP27 conference this week took on meat and global food supplies. They mm. continue to tell us that the way we eat destroys the planet and that there is not enough for everyone and we all need to panic. Um, one part of that is absolutely not true, that there's not enough for everyone. There is enough for everyone. In fact, in industrial nations waste a lot of it, about 1.3 billion tons of food right. in developed nations is just thrown away in the trash every year, or wasted in distribution, um, or thrown out because it's ugly or not sold by its expiration Oh, it's not date. shiny and red? So my apple doesn't look shiny and red. Yeah, I mean, there are now these companies that will sell you, um, like in Portugal, it's called Fruta Fea, which is like ugly fruit, where you can get an apple that's not like perfectly round and might be a little bit deformed and like still tastes delicious. Um, that's just one small solution to this problem. But the waste problem is huge, but they don't frame it like that. They're, they frame it like humans are parasites and we have to learn to eat differently eat different things than you may want, eat more sustainable. Um, one way we're told to do that is to reboot food. So protesters around the COP27 conference uh, protested and used the conference to launch this thing called Reboot Food Initiative. Now, what they're saying is that we can brew a main ingredient of food with precision fermentation. So this is what you do is you take some kind of specific microorganism or such as yeast or bacteria, and then you genetically modify that with the DNA sequence, and then you ferment it, and then you make it into things that are food like. So here's some of the things that they say that you can make from that. For instance, this company in Boulder, Colorado called Meaty um, is making fermented food products that looks kind of like a steak um, out of mycelium, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, this mycelium, yep. Mycelium. Okay, yeah. So what is that? By the way, our audience, Phil Mushrooms. Like Oh, it's just mushrooms. Okay. So, but it's yeah, it's, mycelium, my, myco. Uh, uh, anytime you see the prefix myco, m y c o, that's that has to do with mushrooms. Okay, so they they fermented it and then like brewed it up. You know, they have these videos on their website. Which, if you go and seek out this reboot food, um, I will warn you that it's it, it starts off as this like kind of touchy feely like we're gonna save the planet i'm walking here in a you know forest with a lot of sunlight streaming through the trees we all can live in a forest like this again and eat things that look like that um instead of and then they show you all kinds of grotesque animal um farming and killing um instead of this right um and so don't seek that out if you don't want to see gruesome animal slaughter um so what they're saying though, and then you watch them brew things, brew food. And the, the point that he makes, this CEO is interesting. He says like, well, you say you don't want to eat bacterium and ferment, fermented things and yeast, but you know, what if we were used to that and we were already eating that? And then I told you, well, we could eat meat. Then you'd think that was gross. You only think that's weird because that's what we do, which I don't think is a strong point. <laughs> um, but that's the point that he says. He says that they can brew enough food for the planet, for the entire planet, in a space that's just about the size of London. Um, they say, imagine producing the entire world's protein on an area of land the size of greater London. Imagine three quarters of today's farmland. Imagine eating guilt-free meat, milk, and cheese without ever having to kill an animal. Imagine providing abundant food to the world's poorest. So let's compare our options. Now, let's talk about that animal farmland because we're told that because we eat meat we continue to contribute to the destruction of the planet experts agree that about a quarter of the world's land is animal farmland um they actually don't agree agree on that number but the range is somewhere between 14 percent and 28 percent now we are told that this amount is going to increase and increase because we're all pigs and we eat so much meat and that's bad news because of emissions but according to Michael Schellenberger, I was just reading this book today and this came across. I highlighted because I know how I just read you passages of books and that gets tedious. 
<laughs> so I brought some highlights. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. He says that the good news is that the total amount of land humankind uses to produce meat peaked in the year 2000. Why haven't we been told that? Huh. So it's, it's actually decreased since the year 2000? Since then, the land dedicated to livestock pasture around the world, according to the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, has decreased by more than 540 million square miles, an area 80% as large as Alaska. All of this happened without a vegetarian revolution. So even though just 2 to 4% of Americans are vegetarian, and most people sort of quit within the first year, we are still using using less, not because we're eating less meat, but because we've learned to do it better. Um, back to this quote, he says, developed nations like the United States saw the amount of land they used for meat production peak in the 60s. What? In the 60s, developing nations, including India and Brazil, saw their use of land as pasture similarly peak and de decline. Mo some of this is due to moving away from beef to chicken, uh, but most of it's due to efficiency. He says between 1925, when the United States started producing chicken indoors, and 2007, breeders cut feeding time by more than half while more than doubling the weight Meat production roughly doubled in the United States since the 60s, and yet greenhouse gas emission from livestock declined by 11% during the same period. Why are we not told that? Hmm. Uh, that's Convenient. interesting. Don't you think? He points out that the human body actually thrives on fats, particularly animal fats, which is my personal belief too. Um, not anything against vegetarianism, at all, but the sort of modern vegetarian diet is so high in, high in seed oil that, in fact, that is increasing habitat destruction for farmland. It's not this fermentation stuff or brewed food. It's not meat. It's actually, uh, we've talked about this many times, how the modern vegetarian diet, how it tries to recreate meat products. Right. Highly um, processed. With highly processed seed oils is... Right actually on par with the emissions for animals. Jack Prasovic, uh, many of you know, um, prolific tweeter, um, I think at humanevents.com. He tweeted the other day and I, I retweeted it. Um, he's like, you know, stop eating seed oils. It's killing us. Like the inflammation caused from seed oils is killing all of us. It's yeah. creating, you know, arthritis, um, inflammation in the body. This person, Kid K. Diddley here in our chat says, do you think they just need more land? So they're coming up with ways to wipe these huge farms out. Well, that's one theory we've explored many times. Um, you know, why would they be doing this uh, to get us to another theory that we talk about a lot is um, to make it so that we can't feed ourselves because I cannot brew my my mycelium. Uh, steak. I don't know how to do that. And in fact, I'm going to show you a picture of what those labs look like. Like it's so far from natural land based living where I can grow my own food and slaughter my own chickens and things like that. I can't do it. I would starve. It can, it increases dependency on industrialization and government. Jer Jerusalem, I don't know if I'm saying your name right in our chat says I'm, I'm in the best health I have ever been. I eat only meat, eggs, and butter. I almost died being a vegan. Yikes. Okay. Well, uh, so I mean, not woohoo on the, that part, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to say anything against anyone's diet, but I do absolutely believe that seed oils are inflammatory. I think the data is in on that. Um, but I do want to talk about lab grown meat. Um, because uh, climate author Bjorn Lumberg says that there is real potential here. It's basically stem cell reproduction from regular animals. It's meat from a real animal, um, but you're not eating a part of the animal that ever was alive. In fact, a company in California just, they're called Just. I emphasize Just because they are all caps. Just. J-U-S-T. So it's just. a play on like, hey, we're, we're a just company because... I mean, like we're a woke company because we're well, ju we're just. I, I don't right? know. I'm not gonna well, talk that's, down about whether they're woke. Well, that's in their name. Just. We are just. It's like someone putting a. I don't know. I just feel like. Well, I I don't want you to talk about how you feel about it yet until I tell you what it is. Well, I will tell you how you're, I feel about you're it. You're having a judgment. Okay. based on the idea of it, but you don't know. All right, all right, Okay. Fine. Okay, play it. The California company called Just created chicken 
from the stem cells of just a feather. So the host chicken lived because they just pulled the, they just plucked a feather. Um, so there's, how can you take issue with that? You didn't even hurt the chicken. You didn't even insert a syringe and pull blood. It that's, was just a feather. That's so just. Uh, so this is the lab of a different company called Good Meat, where the meat is made. Now, this is where I'm going to again tell you, I cannot do that in my home kitchen. Philip, what does your kitchen look like? Could you do that? Could you um, make uh, chicken from I a mean, feather? If I, if I put enough... If I put enough money into glassware and it looks like some kind of like, I don't know, like a, maybe, maybe. Like a breaking bad. Not with what I currently have. Yeah, this looks, I like, a, this I, looks like a breaking bad. I have a water bad. bath canner. Okay. I this have looks one like of those a breaking too. bad meth lab. Like who has that in their homes yeah, to be I able have, to do that? I have a very small version of that. It's called an Instapot. <laughs> no. I don't think you can do that. Why don't you try to do that? Go out and plug a chicken feather, shove it in the Instapot. <laughs> And, and cook see it. What see, what and see what happens. And yeah. <laughs> see what happens. See if you can. That's my experiment this weekend. <laughs> you know, I find this so interesting because um, I am a non drinker, and a lot of times social events have you going to places like this, and you walk through labs and you nod your head about how wine goes through these vats, and you're like, yes, vats and barrels. Um, and I find that so boring. And so I was like, but I would look at these things and be like, how do you make meat out of that? Like, there's not even, you know, people spend tons of money to walk through rooms like this if they are told there's alcohol in there. Yeah. So why wouldn't I? Yeah, sure. So come through at the end, the very end, you'll do a meat tasting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's like a little piece. It's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. You're, at the end, you got a guy at the end, he's got his mouth on the hose. He's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sucking in the meat. Where's the, where's the bacon vat? Show me where the bacon vat is. <laughs> and you can have like all these dipping sauces, like a chimichurri. I'm in. This I would do like the wine tasting. I don't want to, I don't ever want to look at wine barrels again. I don't care at all. Um, but I would look at vats of like so meat lab, have, like meat flat, meat flights and stuff. Meat flights. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like they're it. calling this cultured meat. It's grown from cultures and they say they can produce it with 96% less greenhouse gas emissions and water use, but it's still so expensive. Um, a steak from an Israeli company called Aleph farms cost $50 per slice. Although with inflation, that's per kind slice? of slice. Yeah. Holy smokes. Um, and the taste, well, this is what they're saying. Um, in Israel, Left Farms have created the first lab-grown steak after growing cow cells for about a month. Each cut costs $50. They say the taste and flavor are 60 to 70% on the way towards our goal. I don't find that very encouraging. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I'm going to pay $50 for your slice of steak, and it's 60% of what I could get from a delicious like ribeye. Yes, but this was three years ago. If you saw the date stamp on that article was in 2019. Now they're saying that they are ready to grow meat within um, by 2023 pending regulatory approval. Now they say they can grow meat in three to four weeks. If you compare that to what it takes to grow an animal um, to yeah. get it ready to, to slaughter and eat, that's two years. So... So you're you know, I, I think you're falling for their trap here. I don't, I'm not falling for anything. I am presenting this because the fermentation thing gives me pause, especially when you say you're going to ferment something, it will turn into some kind of liquidy something. What I'm thinking is that they're probably going to have to put that with a lot of seed oils too, because you need some kind of filler to make mushrooms taste like meat. Right. And that's what a lot of those beyond meat or impossible burgers are, is a lot of seed oils. Well, maybe it's the... With maybe it's some, the rats and stuff that get ground up with it. Maybe. <laughs> the, um, the but, filler. you know, environmental, <laughs> uh, environmental researchers do say that there is a lot of potential in stem cell meat. Now, you think about it. They don't have to put antibiotics in the animals because they never lived. So there are peer-reviewed studies about how this is done and whether or not it's eco-friendly. There are not very many about the health benefits, so I will reserve my judgment. Um, but people who talk about saving the planet don't ever talk about like stopping deforestation or stopping animal farming. They talk about real innovation. And I think that this is uh, one possibility. I'm, I'm here for it. All right. I would absolutely eat it. But then again, like if you eat a bean burrito from Taco Bell, that's they powder the beans and then they reconstitute it with water. Like, is this any different? Okay. Here's my take on it. You want to hear my take on it? 
Am I allowed to have an emotion about it now? Okay. I'm, I'm bracing for, I think you're going to shit on this before, before actually what? giving it a real consideration, but go ahead. What, what's, what, what real consideration could I give it other than hearing and the presentation of these labs and that it takes less time than it would take for an animal and we you don't have to actually kill an animal. You are one of those people who will walk through those wine vats and nod your head and be super interested. No, no, what and I'm you saying wouldn't... is here again, they don't want you to cook at home. They don't want you to farm at home. Yeah. This is their way of, again, having these giant labs that you can't do this at home. Like yes. there's not going to be a home chicken maker that you're going to have. You don't know. Oh. Did you see Back to the Future part three or whatever, two? Star oh. Trek. <laughs> so maybe, right, a replicator. So maybe a hundred years from now, I can go to my replicator and I can order an Earl Grey tea hot and it'll appear there. Or I can just order a chicken and it'll just come out of the thin air. Like Patrick, you know, like John Luke Picard can you go out. Right now, no one's going to be able to replicate this at home. So they want to take away your farms. They want to consolidate power within a few corporations. Okay. Billionaire. So Bill Gates gets to be one of these billionaires that backs these corporations, the Beyond Meats, the, the few companies that produce this crap. Mm -hmm. Right. You, there's no farming anymore. There's no livestock. There's no actual meat. And they just want to treat you like this. And this is what they want to do. So I'm not falling for this. Okay. It is very far from natural living. It is very far from like you can support yourself. Yes. Um, it, it does make you more dependent on industry. And I'm government. with you on that. And government. If you take away their food, you are totally compliant. Right? You're not going to rise up. You're not going to say anything about what they do to you. You are because if they are providing you with all of your food... They control everything. I guess the way I feel about it is like, yeah, sure, I'll try that. But I would be super uncomfortable. If they're like, you're eating this and we are never farming animals ever again. I'd be like, wait, we need, we still need the animals. Right. I'm afraid that don't take that away. So you're, you're 60% of the way there with your taste of your Israeli steak. Okay. For $50. So a viewer sent this to me the other day. Chrissy uh, sent this to me. She said she was, um, she was literally, she was in Las Vegas at a gas station and she saw this uh, U.S. Uh, these crickets for sale that you could buy at the gas station. Crickets for sale, four ninety nine. This is now a snack that you can get on the road when you're at the gas station. Crickets with salt and vinegar, crickets sour cream, uh, crickets seasoned snacks. You can get twenty four and twenty four of them. So okay. this is uh, you know they want Fake you to news. Eat bugs. It clearly says crickets. Oh, crickets. Are you quite sure yeah. that's for humans? Maybe it was pet food for the chickens? No, they were at the checkout counter. Like the sour cream and out. cheddar so, sour cream and cheddar frog food? Is that <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you got a point. Now, as yes. soon as they come out with the hot and spicy, <laughs> Philip will get them. The hot and spicy. Yeah, this is what's I, I need a hot spicy and Cheetos flavor. Uh, food innovation. All right. Okay, well, let us know what you think of stem cell meat. Um, I was talking with my sister-in-law about it and she was like, but wait, you know, like you still have to hurt the animal. I'm like, no, the animal never lived. You don't have to. And she goes, but the antibiotics, I'm like, no antibiotics. Um, and so even the website for these, Alf, um, these companies that they say, is this for vegans? No, it's meat. It's real meat. <laughs> So, you know, it's not like these meat like products that a vegan could eat. They'd be eating meat. I feel like, uh, you know, I, not to well, crap on vegans is, or whatever, like, I feel be, like they this always. This would be great for the. Great for the what? Sorry. I was going to say this would be great for the vegans that are that are not militant about animals. Like they, they love meat, yeah. but they love animals. So they choose to be vegans. This is this. So this would be fine for them. For ethical it's just not for the people vegans. who don't actually like the taste of meat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are people who believe that eating meat is bad for your biology. That's not going to change. These are people who are ethical vegans. Um, like I have a friend who's like, oh, but I eat birds cause I don't like birds. So she's chicken. Like that kind of thing where she wouldn't have to, I know it's so nonsensical. Um, well, I, I literally have a, I have a, I literally have a friend that that's the same way she'll eat chicken because it doesn't have a face. Like she won't eat things that have like a recognizable face. Apparently chickens just don't have enough of a face. So she'll eat them, but nothing else. Revelation. Oh, our chickens are really going to take that. A lot of people in our chat are saying it's not meat. 
So you can't call it meat. And they're trying, and I get, that's a good point. Like they're trying to make us call it meat. They're just like, oh, but it's made from like, you know, it's in a Petri dish. It's like, it's still but meat. It, it's and not it, meat. And to your point, if it was, if it was meat, why is it only 60% there flavor wise? Then it, it's not meat. <laughs> if it was meat, it'd be a hundred percent. Right. Right. I don't know. Philip, back me up on this. Do you think that it's meat or it's not meat? <laughs> don't ask you him don't, to back You don't, don't have to this, back me up. Don't ask him just to back you up. tell me what you think. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> throw them under the bus i mean i i as far as as far as that i mean like well, how we define things is how we define things so you know it just it just depends you can call it meat you cannot call it meat it's sort of like them is almond milk and they say milk you know it just That's it's true. it's just yeah. a word but i mean I, honestly like like on a on a structural level i mean if it's if it's structurally the same uh if they can if they can create meat that is essentially like the same uh i guess like like chemical components you know if all the molecules are the same then i would consider it meat but that's just me. Yeah. I wonder if it's because like it's the it's the difference between like farm raised fish and wild caught fish because if it's wild it gets muscle activity so their muscles are are more built and stuff where you just be getting this spongy no no size no muscle meat yeah. or something like cuz it still baffles me like why is it only 6 60% yeah, the same if it's actually meat. I don't point. know. Maybe it's just the way that it becomes that it like bruise up together Ugh. you know that it doesn't mm -hmm. um it reminds me of in uh uh what was the new star wars film the first one um uh, the first hope? one no and the, sorry the of the force new awakens? ones force awakens yeah yeah where she she gets the portions and she puts it in the oh, little yeah, thing yeah, yeah. it goes, it goes whoosh, yeah you know that's like what this reminds one me of one quarter portion you only got one quarter portion <laughs> <laughs> my kids always do you that when simon i serve pegg? them they play yeah that simon pegg <laughs> you only one quarter portion um in our chat someone says so this um i don't know what your real name is jer jer um but i see you in all caps so you were the one saying that you've been only eat you only eat meat and you butter and you make your own butter at home and you said my gray hair is no longer gray it's now back to its normal color from That's eating crazy only town. meat and butter i'm telling you like i know david uh he is, his beard is still gray and he does the carnivore diet um i know that uh, jordan peterson's daughter <laughs> but i color it that way Why do you have to go <laughs> um <laughs> after you know um i, know I eat meat and i don't color my hair <laughs> jordan peterson's daughter michaela peterson right she's the one that had that ted talk that they banned her from doing the ted talk on carnivore diet yes and it totally helped her autoimmune issues and all of that um so i don't know there's uh, something to be said for it all right uh i appreciate your comments i don't have a dog in this fight i just find it interesting and uh also i don't eat dog that's good do you guys know that identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America? There's a victim every 14 seconds, a new one. And that's why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor. It's Aura. Now, last year, we had our entire Facebook account taken over by hackers. It was not fun. David was calling me. He's like, I don't know how to get this back. I'm going to reach out to somebody from Facebook. We were on trying to figure this all out, trying to get like Facebook it was security. They had it was like some group out of Vietnam doing something crazy. We couldn't get into our account. We couldn't do anything. Um, well, since that time, we've stopped using Facebook, which is good news. But uh, at the time, we relied on it for our business. Um, identity theft protection is what Aura does. They also do fraud monitoring. They're a VPN. They're a password management, antivirus software, all combined into one really easy to use app. Now, if we had Aura at the time, which we didn't, we would have gotten alerts about it. And what they do is they also monitor the dark web to see if your passwords are showing up on the dark web for sale. So once you sign up, you can even sign up for free and just try it. Just And you can get these alerts. You can see these alerts that pop up and they're gonna say, oh, your login credentials were found. Leaked password on this, you know, someone was trying to create a, 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 a take a mortgage out in your name. I had four different instances of my email and passwords available on the dark web for sale recently. And I got two alerts last week from somebody trying to log into something. Was this you? No, it wasn't. Better change your password. So Aura gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or a credit card in your name. So protect your family and yourself from identity theft. Go to Aura.com slash redacted to get a two-week free trial. It's also in our description of this video. You sign up right now, Aura's going to give you a two-week free trial with my link so you can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you and your family's personal information on the dark web. And if you sign up, 
Let me know in the comments if your personal information has been compromised. You won't regret checking it. So again, try it for free for two weeks. Go to Aura.com slash redacted.